Okay, um, in this video, we just want to introduce the technique of integrating by parts. And the basic idea behind it is pretty simple. Remember that when we're taking um, the differential of two functions multiplied together, that's going to be this function times this differential plus this function times this differential. And if we solve this equation for u dv, then we're going to have this. u dv equals this. Minus the du. And if we integrate both sides of the equation, we have this and this. And if we integrate this, that just takes the differential part away. So we have this expression, and that is our basic integration by parts formula. And we use it when we have an integral problem where we have two functions multiplied together. Now the trick to the technique is, when you have that kind of an integral, you want to decide what part of the integral do we call u, and what part of the integral do we call dv. We want to choose it now so that the part of the integral that ends up being dv, we can integrate that, because we have to have, on this side we have to know what v is. And the part that we call u, we can differentiate, we to differentiate that to get du. So that's one consideration. The other consideration is we want to make certain, hopefully have it set up, so that when we form this new integral here, it's easier or simpler than the one that we started out with. So for example, suppose we had this problem. The integral of x times the cosine of x dx. Now, we could, in theory, say, well, let this be equal to the u part of the integral, the x. So then this part here would have to be the dv part of the integral. Now, if we did that, then this we had to go to differentiate, and well, that's no problem. This we had to go to integrate to get v, that's no problem. So that should have us pretty well set up. On the other hand, for that same problem, suppose we approached it from this point of view. We have x times the cosine of x dx. And suppose we said, well, let's call this u. Now, if I call that u, I have to go take its differential to get du, but that's no problem. That means then that this part of the integral here, that has to be our dv part. That means we have to be able to integrate that. But we can integrate x dx, that's no problem either. So, let's try and solve this integral using this formula, using these substitutions, and see what happens. So we're going to say let u be equal to the cosine of x. du will have to equal minus the sine of x dx, and we're saying dv is x dx, so v would have to be one half x squared. And hopefully, by now maybe some alarm bells are starting to go off, because this expression for v, that's going to be in our new integral, and here we have x squared, Whereas our original integral, we just had x to the first power. So maybe this isn't going to work out so well. Let's see, let's apply the whole formula. So, we have the integral of x 
times the cosine of x dx, and that has to equal u times v, this times this, minus the integral of v times du, that's this times this, I have a minus one half here, so that plus one half the integral, here comes the x squared, times the sine of x dx. And this expression that we have, this is true, there's nothing wrong with it, that doesn't help us at all. Here we start off with an integral where we had the cosine of x multiplied by s. We should have could have solved that with a u du substitution. Now we have this simple pool over here of the sine of x times x squared. If anything, it looks like it's even worse than what we started with. So, let's forget about this approach. Let's go back to this approach. Now we're going to say, let u equal x. So du equals dx. Then we're saying dv, that's the cosine of x dx. So v will equal sine of x. The integral of the cosine is plus the sine. So now, we apply the formula, the integral of x times the cosine of x dx equals u times v. There's u, there's v, so we have x times the sine of x minus the integral of v du. There's v, there's du. And there, now we're in much better shape by choosing this to be u. Then, when we take du, we just get dx. So, here again, in our new integral, the x goes away. And of course, this we can solve right away. That's minus times the integral of the sine is minus cosine of that minus sine. That would make it plus the cosine of x. But what we want to point out is that for this problem here, then, clearly the wise choice is to let this be u and let this be dv. So that we take the derivative and we end up with dx. Whereas before, when we called that this be equal to dv, then that was our u, we took our du, we got a sine expression, but for the dv we get this x squared, that doesn't help us out at all. Now, another thing to be aware of, for some problems, you might have to apply the formula two or more times before you can finally get to a integral that you can handle. For example, suppose we did have this integral here. Suppose this was our problem. The integral of x squared times the sine of x dx. And by now, you know certainly that's the part that we call u, and this is dv. So let u equal x squared du will equal 2x dx, and we're saying dv is a sine of x dx, so v is minus cosine of x. The integral of the sine of x is minus the cosine of x. So now, we apply the formula. This equals u times v. 
Let's change this. Minus the integral of v du over minus 2 here, so that would be plus 2, the integral of x times the cosine of x dx. So if this was our original problem right here, and we use the substitution, now in our new integral, instead of having x squared, we knock it down by one power. Then, what we do at this point is just exactly what we did before. We apply the formula again, letting that be equal to u, and let that be equal to dv. Then when we do that, we can solve this integral here, just like we did up here. But the point is that, since we had an x squared here, to make our original substitution, that gives us a new integral here, where the x is knocked down by one power, we still can't integrate that. We have to go ahead, make our substitutions, and then apply the formula once again. Then when we do that, we can solve this integral, take that answer, combine it with this, and we'll have the answer to our original integral. So we have to go two times around without integrating by parts to get the solution for this. And if you're not quite certain that this isn't completely 100% makes, makes sense to you, uh, don't worry about it. Come back and join us for some more videos. We'll actually solve some problems with this technique. And if you had a chance to look at those videos, hopefully by then you'll feel more comfortable with it.